In this video, I'll be constructing an analytic continuation of the zeta function to all the real number of to all the complex numbers with real parts positive. Okay? So, now to start off, what we do is we analyze the sum, a very specific sum that's a partial sum that's uh, worth evaluating. It's going to be the sum from n equals 1 to k minus 1 of n times 1 over n plus 1 to the z minus 1 over n to the z. Okay. Now, why would we want to analyze this? Well, there's a formula called um, summation by parts. It's very much like integration by parts, except with sums. You can look that up, try to derive this yourself, but what you end up getting is going to be 1 over k to the z minus 1 minus 1 minus the sum from n equals 1 to k minus 1 of 1 over n plus 1 to the z. Okay? Now, why would we do this? Well, because I can then rearrange this by um, adding those two negatives over and subtracting the other one over. Okay, so that I get that 1 plus the sum from n equals 1 to k minus 1 of 1 over n plus 1 to the z, which you may notice is really just a partial sum of the Riemann zeta function because 1 substitutes in for n equals 0, translate it up, and then you have the uh, partial sum of the Riemann zeta function. So that's really just going to be the sum from n equals 1 to k of 1 over n to the z is going to be equal to, okay, that's why we're analyzing this, is going to be equal to this sum subtracted over, so 1 over k to the z minus 1 minus the sum from n equals 1 to k minus 1 of n times 1 over n plus 1 to the z. And you get the idea. Okay? I'll just put dot dot dot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace what's in here. Okay? Because that right there sure looks like an integral, doesn't it? Namely, it's going to be the integral negative z to the n, uh, negative z times n, the integral from n to n plus 1 of 1 over t, or uh, just t to negative z minus 1 dt. Because if I evaluate this, that's going to be negative z times n, then times t to the negative z over z, that z cancels out with that one, Evaluate the t from n to n plus 1, and then look at that. You get that right, that right there, and then you're multiplying it by n. Cool. Well, what's the point of doing this? Well, there's a function called the floor function of t, which will help us here, and it'll allow us to move that n inside of the integral without leaving it as n. Okay? And what it does is it rounds down. So the floor function of 3.1415, so on, is 3. And the floor function of 1.778899 is going to be equal to 1. It rounds down. It's the greatest integer that is less than it. And this function is completely constant on this interval. It's constant on that interval. So I can move it inside that integral without worrying because it's constant on that interval and it's constantly equal to n. Okay? So that's going to be negative z times the integral from n to n plus 1 of the floor function of t times t to the negative z minus 1 dt. Okay, let's plug this in. Okay, so I'm going to have a negative z there, but I have a negative out there, so let's just make that a plus. z times the integral from n to n plus 1 
of the floor function of t, t to the negative z minus 1 dt. Now, here I'm going to have the integral from 1 to 2 plus the integral from 2 to 3 plus the integral from 3 to 4, right? That's what this is. You can imagine the stuff inside the integrals plus the integral from k minus 1 to k. But 1 to 2, 2 to 3, I can combine those into 1 to 3. 1, uh, 1 to 3, to 3 to 4, I can combine those. I can combine all of them because these are just the partial sums, right? If this is my curve and I had this area and I just divided it up into all these little areas and I just added all these little areas together, it's still going to be the entire area. That's the point I'm trying to make is that that sum right there is really just going to be equal to 1 over k to the z minus 1 plus z times the integral from 1 to k of this. And so, what we now define is a very... Um, What we now uh, find is that we can see that the zeta of z, right, the Riemann zeta function of z, is really just going to be equal to 1 over, that goes to, z, um, for the real part of z, bigger than uh, 1, right, that minus 1 goes uh, makes it a positive and then that goes to zero so that goes to zero as k goes to infinity here so we're letting k go to infinity so this right here is the Riemann zeta function right that goes to zero for a re real part of z greater than one and this one goes to z times the integral from one to infinity of the integral of the floor function of t, t to the negative z minus 1 dt, right? Now, I claim is that I can continue, I can uh, make this into something even better, okay? Namely, by subtracting by subtracting 1 over z minus 1. Okay, what would that do? Well, because z times the integral of t times t to the negative z minus 1, dt, right? Right here. It's, of course, going to be equal to z times... We're going to have t to the negative z. You can evaluate that all out. It's going to be uh, z over z minus 1, which is going to be 1 plus 1 over uh, z minus 1, right? Because that would be t to the negative z, evaluate it all out, you get that. This is from 1 to infinity. And so, that by subtracting this over, right? So if I subtract that on both sides, I get zeta of z minus 1 over z minus 1 is going to be equal to 1 plus z times the integral from 1 to infinity of this, t to the negative z minus 1 dt, but I also need to account for the fact that I added this onto it, so I need to subtract off of that z times the integral from 1 to infinity of t times t to the negative z minus 1 dt. I combine those two integrals to get the floor function of t minus t, t to the z minus 1, uh, negative z minus 1 dt. And I claim that this integral right here extends to real part of z bigger than zero, 
Okay? Because the absolute value, I'm going to say it's absolutely converging, the absolute value from 1 to k of the floor function of t minus t, t to the negative z minus 1 dt, right? The absolute value of that, this right here is a constant that is less than 0. So when you take the um, I'm going to say less than or equal to the integral of the absolute value there, right? Because the absolute value of the integral is less than the integral of the absolute value. Okay, I'm going to move this up here. So I have the absolute value of the integral from 1 to infinity of uh, floor function t minus t, t to the minus z minus 1 dt, it's going to be less than or equal to the integral of the absolute value, right, uh, I'll leave this up to uh, you to prove, and then that's going to be less than or equal to this thing inside the brackets is going to be less than or equal to the individual multiplications, right? Then times the... Uh, so right there I have the absolute value of the floor function, and then times the absolute value of t to the minus z minus 1 dt, right? Which is less than or equal to, this right here is a constant that is less than zero, right? Because if it was greater than zero, that wouldn't be the lowest value, okay? So that's going to be less than zero. So I can get rid of it and still keep that less than or equal to. Now I have this. What I claim is that this is less than or equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of t to the negative real part of z plus 1 dt because the absolute value of t to the z is less than or equal to t to the real part of z. Why is this? Because that right there is going to be t to the real part of z times t to i times the imaginary part of z, right? I just separated it out into its components t to i times the imaginary part of z has absolute value 1, okay? Right, because that just be e to the natural log times that, that give you absolute value 1. So this is absolute value 1. This is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of this, and then times the absolute value of that, which is 1, so that goes away. This is positive right there. That's where this comes from. And so we now have the integral from 1 to infinity of this, which is also going to be less than or equal to, which is also going to be less than or equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of the individual real part, so negative real part of z, then minus 1 dt. Right? I just separated it out into its components, which you can evaluate to be 1 over the real part of z for the real part of z greater than 0. Okay? So after all of this, what have we proven? That its absolute value is bounded. The absolute value here is bounded. So therefore, this converges. So therefore, this is an analytic continuation. And so, what we've basically done here is shown that, in actuality, that we may define the zeta function of z as... Z 
zeta of z equals 1 over z, z minus 1 plus 1 plus z times the integral from 1 to infinity of the floor function of t minus t, t to the negative z minus 1 dt for the real part of z bigger than 0. Oh! Oh! Ah!